In this video, we're learning how to multiply fractions. And at the top of our screen, we see this rule that says, to multiply fractions, multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Don't forget to cross reduce if possible. So we're gonna ignore this second part for now. We're not gonna talk about cross reduction until examples three and four. So we're just gonna look at the first rule, which is we wanna multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So the nice thing about multiplication is that we do not need common denominators when we're multiplying fractions. We need common denominators when we're adding or subtracting fractions, but not for multiplication. So when we multiply fractions, we just want to multiply both of our numerators. So we're gonna multiply three and five, which is gonna give us 15. And then we wanna multiply the denominators together. So four times seven is 28. And 15 and 28 don't have any common factors, so we can't simplify. So we get 15 over 28 as our answer. Let's take a look at example two, which is nine tenths times three fifths. So again, we don't need a common denominator. We're just gonna multiply straight across. So we're gonna multiply the numerators. Nine times three is 27. And we're gonna multiply the denominators. 10 times five is 50. We have 27 over 50, which cannot be simplified. So that's our final answer. So now we're gonna take a look at a couple examples that use what's called cross-reducing. So example three is 36 55ths times 22 45ths. Now you could just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators, but it's gonna get really messy having to multiply numbers this big, and then it's gonna be pretty hard to simplify our answer at the end. So we're gonna learn something called cross-reducing. So cross-reducing is just a way that we can simplify our problem before we multiply. So what we wanna do is break up all of the different parts of our fractions into some factors. So I can break up 36 into, let's say nine and four. And I'll show you guys why I picked nine and four. As we're going through the problem, I'm gonna break up 55 into five and 11. And then I'm gonna break up 22 into two times 11. I'm gonna break up 45 into nine times five. Now I'll explain to you guys why I picked the factors I did. So 36 and 45 both have a nine in common. So that's why I broke them up into nine times something. 55 and 22 both have 11 as a common factor. So that's why I broke them up into 11 times something. Now, what we can do is cross out any common factors that show up on the top of our problem and the bottom of our problem. So I can cross out this nine because it shows up on the top and the bottom. And I can cross out the 11 because it shows up on the top and the bottom. And now I'm just gonna multiply what's left. So four times two on the top is eight and five times five on the bottom is 25. And because I cross-reduced and simplified everything in the beginning, I don't have to simplify at the end, so I get eight 25ths. So now let's take a look at example four, which is 24 over 32 times 14 over 15. So before we cross-reduce, you may actually notice that we can just simplify 24 over 32. So I always start by simplifying my fractions if possible and then trying to cross-reduce. So 24 and 32 can both be divided by eight. So I can write 24 as eight times three and 32 as eight times four. And then I can't simplify 14 15, so I'll leave it as it is. And then I can cross out this eight on the top and eight on the bottom because that just simplifies to one. So now I really have three fourths times 14 15 and we're gonna be able to cross reduce. And the way you can tell if you can cross reduce is if these diagonal numbers have any factors in common. So three and 15 have a factor in common and four and 14 have a factor in common. So we're gonna break up each part of our fraction into its factors. So three is prime, so I'm just gonna keep it as is because its only factors are one in itself. Four and 14 are both divisible by two. So I'm gonna split four up into two times two I'm gonna split 14 up into two times seven. 15 is divisible by three, so I wanna split it up into three times five. 
And now we want to cross out any common factors that show up on the top and bottom. So we have three on the top and three on the bottom, so we can cross those out. And we have two on the top and two on the bottom, so we can cross those out. Because we crossed out this three on the top and there's nothing else there, it's just the same as one. So now we really have one times seven on the top, which is seven, two times five on the bottom, which is 10. And we don't have to simplify because we fully simplified before we started. So we get seven tenths. Now I want to show you guys a shortcut so you don't always have to write out these factors if you don't want. So I'll do it over here on the right. So I'm going to go from our already simplified version of our problem. So I'm going to use 3 fourths times 14 fifteenths. And I'm going to show you guys a shortcut for cross reducing. So we want to look at the numbers that are diagonal from each other. So let's look at this 3 and 15 first. They're both div divisible by 3, so I'm going to divide them both by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I'm going to turn the 3 into a 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5, so I'm going to turn the 15 into a 5. I'm going to do the same thing with the 4 and the 14. So they're both divisible by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So now I really have 1 over 2 times 7 over 5. And this way we didn't have to write out all the factors. And now we just multiply across. 1 times 7 is 7. 2 times 5 is 10. And we get the same answer, 7 tenths. So let's go through two more examples where we're going to use cross reduction and simplification. So for these last two problems, I encourage you guys to pause the video and try them on your own. And then you can watch me go through the problems to check if you got your answers correct. So the first problem is 35 60 fourths times 16 20 fifths. So we definitely want to cross reduce here because these numbers are pretty big. I'm going to do it the long way by writing out the factors just in case you guys want more practice with that. So 35 and 25 both have a 5 in common. So I'm going to break up 35 into 7 times 5. I'm going to break up 25 into 5 times 5. 64 and 16 both have a 16 in common. So they're both divisible by 16. So 64 is 16 times 4. 16 is just 16 times itself. So I'll write it as 16 times 1. And now we want to cross out anything that is on the top and the bottom. So 5 shows up on the top and the bottom once. We can't cross out this other 5 on the bottom because we only have one 5 on the top. 16 shows up on the top and the bottom, so we're going to cross those out. So we're left with 7 times 1 on the top, which is 7, and 4 times 5 on the bottom, which is 20. So we get 7 twentieths. So now at number 6, 28 over 42 times 21 over 40. So you guys may notice that we can actually simplify 28 over 42 first, because 7 goes into both of them. So we can rewrite 28 as 4 times 7, rewrite 42 as 6 times 7, and we have 21 over 40, which we cannot simplify. And now because the 7 shows up on the top and bottom of our fraction, we can cross it out, and I realize we can simplify this even more. So we can divide 4 and 6 both by 2, so 4 is equal to 2 times 2. 6 is equal to 2 times 3. I can't do anything with 21 over 40. I want to cross out these 2's that they have in common on the top and bottom. So now I have 2 thirds times 21 over 40. And now we want to see if we can cross reduce. So we're going to look at the number as diagonal of each other. So 2 and 40 have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to rewrite 40 as 2 times 20. And 3 and 21 both have a common factor of 3. So I'm going to rewrite 21 as 3 times 7. And now because there is a 2 on the top and the bottom, I can cross those out. And I'm going to turn this into a 1 so I'm not left with nothing on the top of that fraction. And then because there's a 3 on the top and the bottom, I can cross those out. And again, I'm going to turn this bottom 3 into a 1, so I'm not left with nothing. And now I multiply straight across. So 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 20 is 20, and we end up getting the same answer as the last question, which is 7 20ths. 
So hopefully this video helped you guys learn how to multiply fractions. So remember that when you're multiplying fractions, you just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. You do not need a common denominator to multiply fractions. And before you start, you always want to check if you can simplify either fractions or cross-reduce.